Hello everyone. Welcome to Rinu's Englishpedia. My name is Wanda Petronsky and I'm Polish. My family and I emigrated to America in search of a better life, but unfortunately we had to face discrimination on account of our strange names. This is my story of the hundred dresses. Hello everyone. I'm Peggy and this is my class, room 13. Today, we'll be talking about Wanda. Wanda generally sits in the next to the last seat, in the last row. This is the corner of the room, where the rough boys, who do not score good marks, sit. This is the corner where there is the most scuffling of feet, the most roars of laughter when anything funny is said and where the most mud and dirt is found on the floor. No one really knows why Wanda sits here. She is neither rough nor noisy. In fact, she is rather quiet, and never says anything and never even laughs aloud though her shoes are often muddy, probably because she comes from Bogin's Heights. We are late for school today, as we were waiting for Wanda and had wanted to tease her. Generally we think about Wanda early in the morning when we are going to the schoolyard, or a new time, when we are returning to school. After all, this is the only time we can victimize her. Why did we victimize her? I know, this is what you all are asking. Actually it was her name Wanda Petronsky, which had singled her out. We in room 13, did not have such strange names and most of us found it very funny. But that was not the reason that we teased her. She wore the same faded, an iron but clean blue dress to school every day. When we asked her how many dresses do you say you have hanging in the closet? She would reply that. A hundred. A hundred all lined up in my closet. One of them is pale blue with colored trimmings and another is of brilliant jungle green color with a red sash. And I also have sixty pairs of shoes, all lined up in my closet. A hundred dresses and sixty pairs of shoes. Oh my god. Why does she lie so much? This is the actual reason I tease her. I'm not cruel by nature. After all, I protect small children from bullies and I can't help crying for hours if an animal is mistreated. But I cannot tolerate liars. This game of asking Wanda how many dresses and hats and this and that she has, is bothering me. Even I wear hand-me-downs, but at least I don't live at Bogan's Heights. I'm not rich but I'm not silly enough like Wanda to say that I have a hundred dresses. Still I do not like it. I wished I had the nerve to write Peggy a note asking her to stop teasing Wanda. But. But what if I become a new target for Peggy and the girls? She will ask me where I got the dress I am wearing and I will have to say that it is one of your old ones that my mother tried to disguise with new trimmings so no one in room 13 would recognize it. No. I will tear up the note. I do not have the courage to confront Peggy. Ma Rover. Peggy is the best liked girl in the class and my best friend. She cannot possibly do anything that is really wrong. Today, Thursday is very special. A few days back we had a competition in which the girls had to submit drawings of a dress designed by them and the boys had to submit drawings of motorboats. But, we cannot wait for Wanda today. It is drizzling and mall rover, Miss Mason is going to announce the results of the competition. I'm sure it will be Peggy who will win the competition among the girls as she is a wonderful artist. Good morning students. Today I'm going to announce the winners of the competition. Among the boys, it is Jack Biggles for his design of an outboard motor which is on exhibition in room 12 along with the sketches by all the other boys. As for the girls, most of the girls have submitted one or two sketches, but there is one girl who has actually submitted 100 designs all different and almost beautiful. Room 13 should be proud of her. And the winner is Wanda Petronsky. Unfortunately, Wanda has been absent from school for some days and is not here to receive the applause that is due to her. However all the drawings have been exhibited here for your benefit. Look Peg, there's that blue one she told us about. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, and there's that green one. Boy, and I thought I could draw. Oh, I've just received a letter from the principal. It is a letter from Wanda's father that I want to read to you. Dear teacher, my Wanda will not come to your school anymore. 
Jake also. Now we move away to big city. No more Holler Pollock. No more ask why funny name. Plenty of funny names in the big city. Yours truly Jan Petronsky. I'm sure that none of the boys and girls in room 13 would purposely and deliberately hurt anyone's feelings because his or her name happened to be a long, unfamiliar one. I prefer to think that what was said, was said in thoughtlessness. I know that all of you feel the way I do, that this is a very unfortunate thing to have happened, unfortunate and sad, both. And I want you all to think about it. I'm feeling sick to my stomach. Why didn't I say something to Peggy? I had stood by silently, and that was as bad as what Peggy had done. In fact it was worse. I am a coward. At least Peggy hadn't thought her actions to be mean, but I had known they were doing wrong. I can empathize with Wanda. Goodness. Isn't there something I can do? If only I could tell Wanda that I hadn't meant to hurt her feelings. Does Peggy feel bad? Maybe Wanda has not moved away. Maybe Peggy and I could climb the heights and tell Wanda that she has won the contest, and she is smart and the hundred dresses are very beautiful. Hey, let's go and see if that kid has left town or not. You have the same idea. You are really all right. Well, at least, I never did call her a foreigner or make fun of her name. I never thought she had the sense to know we were making fun of her anyway. I thought she was too dumb. And gee, look how she can draw. I just hope we can find Wanda. I want to tell her that we are really sorry we picked on her, and how wonderful the whole school thought she was, and to please not move away and I also want to assure her that everybody would be nice to her and if they weren't, you and I would fight them. This damp, drizzly, and dismal November afternoon, Bogan's Heights has such a forbidding air but Wanda's house and yard, although shabby, look so clean. There is no sign of life about the house. No one is answering our knock. The Petronskis are gone. How can we ever make amends? Well, anyway, she's gone now, so what can we do? Besides, when I was asking her about all her dresses, she was probably getting good ideas for her drawings. She might not even have won the contest otherwise. Is what Peggy says true? If it is, I wouldn't have to feel so badly. But I'm unable to sleep at night. I can't stop thinking about Wanda and her faded blue dress and her little house and the glowing pictures of those hundred dresses. I must really think this through. Yes. I promise myself, I'm never going to stand by and say nothing again. If I ever hear anybody picking on someone because they are funny looking or because they have strange names, I will speak up. Even if it means losing Peggy's friendship. I have no way of making things right with Wanda, but from on I will never make anybody else unhappy again. Peggy, I think we should write a letter to Wanda. Dear Wanda, how are you? We all are fine here. We wanted to congratulate you on winning the dress designing competition. Your drawings were really beautiful. Do you like the place where you are living now? And how is your new teacher? Do you like her? Do write and let us know everything about yourself. Lots of love Maddie and Peggy. Where shall we post the letter? We don't know her new address. Let's post it to her Bogan's Heights address. We can write forward on it and then it will reach her new address. So many days have passed since we wrote to Wanda. The letter has not returned, so maybe Wanda has received the letter. Perhaps. She is very hurt and angry and is not going to answer. I cannot blame her. Peggy has almost forgotten the whole business, but I have to make speeches to myself before I can sleep. I imagine myself making speeches about Wanda, defending her from great crowds of girls who are teasing her with, how many dresses have you got? And before Wanda can respond, I see myself crying out, stop, and then everyone feels ashamed, the way Wanda used to feel. It is Christmas time. Today, on the last day of the school, before the Christmas holidays begin, I have a surprise for you. I have received a letter from Wanda. I'm so happy. Now I know where she lives and can send her, her medal for the drawing competition. I will read her letter to you. Dear Miss Mason, how are you in room 13? 
Please tell the girls they can keep those hundred dresses, because in my new house I have a hundred new ones, all lined up in my closet. I'd like that girl Peggy to have the drawing of the green dress with the red trimming, and her friend Maddie to have the blue one for Christmas. I miss that school and my new teacher does not equalize with you. Merry Christmas to you and everybody. Yours truly Wanda Petronsky. Boy. This shows she really likes us. It shows she got our letter and this is her way of saying that everything's all right. And that's that. I hope so. But I'm feeling so sad. I will never be able to meet the little tight lip Polish girl again and will never be able to make things right between us again. I will pin the drawing over that torn place in the wallpaper. This shabby room will come alive from the brilliancy of the colors. I had stood by quietly without saying anything but Wanda has been nice to me anyway. But... But what is this? The head on the drawing. It looks like me. It really looks like my mouth. Why? It really looks like my own self. Wanda had really drawn this for me. I must quickly go to Peggy's house to see her drawing. Peg. Let me see your picture. Why? What's the matter? Why do you want to look at the picture? Look. She drew you. That's you. What did I say? She must have really liked us anyway. Yes, she must have. I'm so relieved. I felt so guilty when I thought of Wanda standing alone in that sunny spot in the schoolyard, looking stolidly over at the group of laughing girls after she had said, Sure, a hundred of them all lined up. This was my story and the story of many other immigrants who are discriminated against because of their names, color, accent and mannerisms. But I feel that with friendship and acceptance, we can overcome this form of discrimination. I hope you liked the story. Please do not forget to like, share and subscribe to Renews Englishpedia and don't forget to press the bell button for further notifications. Thank you.